Hi, Binny. Aha! What have you got for me? Fresh pineapple, Professor, which my mom grew at home. It's so tasty. Mmm. Mmm. -mm. Fresh homegrown fruits devoid of pesticides. There are not many things better than that, I say. I'm thinking I should become a farmer when I grow up. It's so cool. Growing fruits and vegetables and all you ever need in your own garden. It is interesting, I agree. But I doubt if you know all the practices involved in farming. What practices? I will have to apply a lot of sunscreen, that's it. I can't have suntans even when I'm a farmer. Ha ha ha! Suntans? I'm not talking about beauty practices that you need to follow, Binny. Then, what are the other practices that I need to follow? Farming, Binny, it involves a lot of steps and it needs a lot of careful planning and a lot of time and effort to have a successful harvest. It can't be that difficult, is it? Hmm, I think we should study about the pre- and post-harvesting practices to give you a good idea of how much work goes behind the scenes before you pick up the finished products from a supermarket. Let us enter the virtual world and you'll get all the answers. The harvest has been good. The farmers are relaxed after all the hard work of the season. They are happy that there has been no shortage of water and hope profits will be good. However, one farmer, Gansham, is sad. Unlike the others, he has had a poor harvest this year. His son, Banu, is very upset too. What is going on here? Can Banu have made mistakes leading to a poor harvest and sick animals? What different things should he have been taking care of? Let's find out in this episode, Harvesting and Post-Harvesting Agricultural Practices, where we learn about the importance of keeping fields free from weeds, methods of harvesting and protecting the crop that has been harvested. Let's begin by considering a fact. Pre-harvest agricultural practices do not end with sowing and manuring. The farmer has much more to do before the crop ripens and is ready to be picked. To start with, competitors must be kept away or if they do manage to creep in, must be destroyed. Not by pulling off leaves, but by uprooting them completely and yes, before they begin to flower and sprout seeds. Otherwise, there'll be more weeds the next time round. Sometimes, weeds can be very stubborn. In which case, the farmer needs to spray weedicides because manual weeding can be very time consuming. Remember, Though weedicides are not harmful to the main crop, they can harm the farmers spraying them. Now that the crops are protected against weeds and pests, there's not much to do except pray for plenty of sunshine so that the grain ripens. At last it's harvest time, time to cut the crop. On small holdings, farmers use a sickle to cut the crop. On large holdings, however, farmers use a machine called the harvester. Note that farmers cut the crop as close to the ground as possible or uproot them fully if they can because the dried stalk is fed to cattle or used for thatching. After cutting the crop, the next stage is to separate the grain from the chaff. This is called threshing. On large holdings, farmers may again use a harvester. But often, a machine called combine is used that cuts as well as separates the grain from the chaff. Now the grain must be protected 
from pests and further spoilage. First, let's learn about grain storage. The farmer must not forget to dry the grain thoroughly before storing it. For storage at home, gunny bags and bins are used. While on a large scale, silos and granaries are used. Now what about the pests that will be lurking around such as rats and insects? It's a good idea to put neem leaves into bins and bags along with the grain. This protects grain from pests and it is not harmful if eaten by mistake. On a large scale, the storage areas need to be made free of pests and insects before storing the grain by spraying pesticides and insecticides. So, this completes the harvesting process. <gasps> I never knew there were so many things to take care of. It is to be taken care of more than your makeup, Binny. Makeup? That is not difficult when you are an expert. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now see, these are some of the pictures of pesticides and weedicides used by farmers. Have you seen them before? No, I haven't. I have seen my mom using manure. Yes, manures are important. But when you are farming on such a large scale, manures aren't the only thing to keep in mind. But these weeds, aren't they also plants? Why not let them grow? How are they harmful to the crops? Yes, they are also plants. But you have to remove them. They cause quite a lot of damage. What damage? Well, let's enter the virtual world for that. I have your answer there. What happens if weeds are allowed to grow along with the crop? Nutrients in soil get shared between the crop and the weeds. You can guess the outcome. Smaller grains, lower yield. Weeds can also get mixed up with hay. If eaten by cattle, they can cause sickness. And that brings us to a possible answer to Banu's troubles. Maybe he was careless during weeding. If this is what happened, what a big price he has had to pay for just one step not done right. Hmm. Now I don't think I should become a farmer. It's much harder than I ever imagined it to be. Haha, <laughs> yes, it is quite complicated. Don't you think science is easier compared to this? Yes, definitely. But Professor, all these pesticides and weedicides are chemicals. And one way or the other, aren't they harmful to us humans? Consuming these chemicals is definitely not good for the human body. Then, is there any way we can avoid them? Let's enter virtual world again to find answers to your question. Let's challenge our brains. Can crops be grown and stored without artificial or chemical weedicides and pesticides? Increasing shift towards what is known as organic or natural weedicides and pesticides. However, Sometimes it does become necessary to use artificial pesticides. Artificial pesticides. Hmm. I wish I can go back to the time when food was grown without any such chemicals. I wish I can go back to the time when beauty was without any makeup. Go back to your olden beauties then. Hm. What else do we have to learn today? <laughs> By the way, since you have mentioned about olden times, would you like to know about harvesting in that time? Sure, Professor. Then let's check out our Do You Know section. Do you know, Bini, that in ancient Egypt, harvesting time was a time of intense labor for the farmers? How come, Professor? 
At that point of time, reapers used to cut the ripe corn with wooden sickles edged with sharp flints. Women and children used to follow behind the reapers to collect any fallen ears of corn. Did they use cattle also? Yes, cattle were used to trample over the cut corn to remove the grain from the ears. Oh, then how did they remove the chaff from the grain? They used to toss the grain into the air so that the breeze blew the light, useless chaff away. Oh, that's really a lot of hard work, Professor. It is now time to revise what we have learnt. Let's have a quick recap. In this module, we have learnt that there are five steps in the pre-harvesting and harvesting process. Sowing and manuring, weeding, harvesting, threshing and storage. Weeding keeps out unwanted plants. During harvesting, mature crops are cut using a sickle or harvester. Threshing is done manually or using a harvester or combine. Moisture must be avoided while storing grain. So, Bini, you have learnt different pre- and post-harvesting practices. No wonder they have harvest festivals to celebrate a good harvest after what is such a long and tedious season. Bye-bye, friends. See you again in the next episode of Science for Juniors.